Hello everyone and welcome back to The Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're going to have a conversation about Grand Cafe. Something a little different because we're going to talk about characters that we just don't know about just yet. You see, when we think about Grand Cafe, we naturally think about the Dragon Children. Those are the ones who are basically leading the country whilst the Dragon Emperor and the Moon Empress are otherwise occupied on some sort of plan that we just won't find out about until... Well, I guess we will never find out about it. Games Workshop love to leave master plans as ambiguous as possible, which is cool, but also kind of infuriating when you're trying to find out some lore. To date, we've only seen three of the Dragon Children. Two of them are currently playable, and one will soon enough be playable in Total War Warhammer 3. These are Miao Yin, Zhao Ming, and finally Yuan Bo, who has recently got revealed as the character for Shadows of Change. Now, we know there's a total of nine children. Five of them are active, and four are considered lost. Further to this, we also know the name of Seven Children. So for ease of access, we're going to swap to the Immortal Empires map and start placing logos where they should be, more or less. Miao Yin and Zhao Ming can be found in the Northern Province and Western Provinces, respectfully. These are characters that we already know from their locations, not only from Total War, but also in the Warhammer the Old World posts, because they're confirmed to be active characters there too. You on both the Jade Dragon, Yin Yin the Sea Dragon, and Li Dao, the Fire Dragon are the leaders of the Central Provinces, Eastern Provinces, and Southern Provinces, respectively. Now, we know some of their locations because of established lore, like for example Fu Chao, so I'm just putting some, well, cafe and logos there just to have something there to represent each of the dragons. I'm assuming that they'll have something more stylized when they get their own official factions, either in Total War or in Warhammer the Old World. The five active dragons are the ones that rule pretty much all of Cafe instead of their father and mother, while they're preoccupied with something else. Those are the five active dragon children and now we do know that there are four inactive, they're referred to as four lost dragon children. The first of the lesser known children was Shen Zhu. This has been described as a dragon of light and hope. Now we don't know exactly too much about her, but the general campaign of Warhammer 3, this is the base game Realm of Chaos one, said that she was lost after venturing beyond the mountains of Norska. To date that's all pretty much that we know, and it could be possible that Shadows of Change will touch upon that a little bit, considering that well, it's a little bit further past the story. At some point, we're going to have to find out something about her, right? Yuan Bo's reveal also revealed the name of a dragon that we did know. This is Shiyama, the spirit dragon. So we don't know too much still about her, considering that she's been considered long lost for a while. And the concept of lost has been left quite ambiguous. You see, she is the first dragon that was sired by the dragon emperor. She's the first of the nine, and she's known to guide spirits into the underworld. Now, we know of her location because apparently she is sleeping beneath the Dragon River, guiding the souls of the dead, and yeah, that's it. We don't know if sleeping means that she's actually in some sort of pocket dimension, as pocket dimensions in Warhammer Fantasy do exist, with actually fairly common, or if her physical body is just flat out dead and her spirit is just continuing doing its thing. Again, stuff that we need a little bit of context on, but I imagine that we won't get it until the Cafe Army book gets released for Warhammer the Old World, um, which could be years from now at this point. One interesting thing to note, however, is that people still know what she looks like. There was a description in the Yuan Bo book, which is kind of interesting, as the Changeling temporarily changed into her form, so I'm assuming that the Changeling was already active and around by the time that she... Um, well, disappeared, essentially. But that leaves us with two unknown dragon children. No name, no lore attached to them, but we can kind of make an educated guess on what winds of magic they could represent. As each of the dragons that we've seen so far have been kind of representing the eight color laws and very likely high magic also. Currently, shadows and high magic are not really represented here, so it could be that the last of the nine dragon children will have access to the law of shadows and obviously the law of high magic respectively. But we'll talk about the high magic one a little bit later as it's a big portion of this video. However, 
However, there might actually be a name for one of the dragons. In the novel by Rob Sanders, Archeon Everchosen, we know that Archeon fights against a dragon referred to as Yang Ya Long. That would be the Cathayan pronunciation, whereas in Reichspiel he is known as Flamefang. Now it is very important to note here that Flamefang doesn't really fit, considering that we know the fire dragon is called Li Dao, so Yang Ya Long could be long retconned at this point, as back then there was no plans to make Cafe into a tabletop faction, and let alone Cafe into a total war faction. But it is very important to note that Flamefang was not an ordinary Cathayan dragon. Flamefang was in fact referred to as a Chaos Dragon. Meaning that in this part of the lore, retcon though otherwise we don't know just yet, Flamefang the Cathayan dragon had fallen to the ruinous powers, which is something which many people would think is not possible considering that they're born from celestial beings, but then again, even creatures that have been created by either the Old Ones or other gods which are there to be resistant to chaos do fall. We know of, say for example, ogres who are naturally resistant to chaos, they can fall. We know that normal dragons, the relatives of the Cathayan dragons, have been able to fall to chaos too, either by possession or by other means, so could it be possible, could it be entirely possible that a Cathayan dragon had fallen to the ruinous powers? Maybe a dragon that led the vanguard into the northern chaos waste, and as he or she went deeper into it, the chaos gods were able to spread their influence and corrupt the dragon into madness. Something like this would fall with typical Warhammer fashion, as it would prove that the Cathayan dragons, even as powerful as they may be, may actually still be defeated, may still fall, and not be as powerful as the Cathayans themselves believe them to be. This could be a reason why this dragon is called Lost, and why the dragon has been pretty much not revealed just yet. With the story of Total War Warhammer 3, right now we know that Archeon has just marched out, so if you start a campaign with Archeon, he's just beginning to pick up the items which he'll need to solidify himself as the Everchosen. The Eye of Shirian, the Armor of Morkar, all these items are the ones that you pick up as you begin and continue your campaign. Something to kind of push this forward is the fact that each of the Cathayan dragons seem to have a job whereas the five known ones are the rulers of certain provinces, it could very much be that this dragon, if it is Flamefang, could have been the dragon vanguard. It could have been the one that launched invasions against any enemies that would harm the state. Again, the Northern Chaos Wastes, or anything else. Similar to how a popular theory that's cropping up right now about Shenzhou is she is the dragon of peace. Rather than being the aggressor, she was more of a diplomat, hence light and hope. And Shiyama, the spirit dragon, would have been internally working through Cafe for the people, rather than working into a specific province. To further cement this, Yuan Bo in his recent ebook does wonder why the influence of chaos is happening a lot more than usual in Lan Li, so he could be maybe thinking that Miao Yin might have fallen to some form of corruption. This is obviously reading in between the lines, but it's not out of the question. If it's happened before, it could very much happen again, hence why he's keeping eyes on Sei Zhao Ming, who is apparently falling to madness with each passing year. Now, as we know, the dragons do represent laws of magic too, so it could be that this dragon, which would eventually become Flamefang if this remains in law, could have been the one to represent high magic. With its corruption, it was probably turned over by Zinch, because it's kind of interesting, right, that Zinch, especially shown in Total War Warhammer, seems to have a very big interest in Cafe. At the launch of Warhammer 3, we've seen Kairos trying to invade Cafe with the Champions of Chaos in the Immortal Empires campaign. Now we've got our good friend Village the Cursling trying to invade Cafe again. And in the recent ebook, we could see that, <laughs> yeah, we've got the Changeling interested in Cafe too. Perhaps Zinch was able to corrupt one of the dragons, and that's where the name Flamefang was taken from there. As many spells within Zinch's law is, well, yeah, it's fire, you know, the blue fire of Zinch, pink fire of Zinch, so it kind of fits. Maybe it's something linked to Zinch wanting to corrupt all the Cathayan dragons to have an extra force in his arsenal, which is something that is not out of the question. Keep in mind that the Chaos Gods are still playing the great game, even before the end times and close to the start of it, so he's probably trying to bolster his forces to make sure that Cafe falls to Zinch, 
We've been seeing a lot of Chaos Cultists of Zinch, which would then improve on Zinch's power tremendously. And that leaves us with the final dragon. Nothing is really known here, barring the fact that he or she is lost, and a very educated guest could put it as the Shadow Dragon. Again, we won't know if this character is dead or not, or maybe something else. You see, I've got a bit of a theory, and I've discussed this with my community, some of them think the same way. It could very much be possible that this lost dragon, the Shadow Dragon, is alive, but no longer affiliated with Grand Cafe, where the Shadow Dragon could have broken away from the Dragon Emperor and his siblings to maybe work with another country, maybe the Empire of Nippon. So hear me out here because this is just basic theory crafting, but the Shadow Dragon could have possibly worked throughout the whole of Grand Cafe maybe as the person who worked within the shadows, who knew the assassins, who worked with the Onyx Crow men originally. You see, Yuan Bo is known as the administrator, but also the executioner and master of spies. It seems like a lot of work for one dragon, doesn't it? It could have been that whomever this shadow dragon was might have been privy to a lot of internal information from the dragon emperor and moon empress and found himself or herself disheartened, possibly breaking away in rebellion, similar to how, you know, real life teenagers, children will rebel against their parents and going off to do their own thing. In some cultures, going away from your family and completely leaving them would be considered being lost. It's not out of the question for this to happen, and the fact is, when we look at Warhammer through a historical point of view, it takes away from our real-life history, our real-life mythology. The Cafean dragon, the Chinese dragon, is also very similar to that of the Japanese dragon, almost identical. This is what happens when a lot of countries are very close to each other. Myths in one country will bleed over to the next. So this is why we have the dragon like that, and it's very possible that one Cafean dragon went over there. Not to rule it, because we do know of a divine emperor of the sun, but possibly to help out the nation. More than likely to protect them from a possible invasion from Grand Cafe as we do know that Cafe can also act quite expansionist. We know that they had to rule Cafe with an iron fist. We don't know if there were any minor countries within that territory prior, and obviously Yin Yin trying to take over Lustria. So I would say it's completely possible that the Shadow Dragon would stand with Nippon out of defiance. Now this theory could also help out a rather large lore issue if we ever get Nippon, not just for Total War, but even just for, say, for example, Warhammer the Old World. The Cafean Dragons are said to be the only nine of their kind, so if Nippon was added in and they would likely add in dragons, it would be a shame if they added in more dragons of that style, as it could devalue the dragons in general. Something so unique and then, oh no, there's actually a quite a fair number of them. This kind of makes it much more interesting, and it could also be how we end up getting the ninja-type warriors in Nippon. The Shadow Dragon went over there hundreds of years ago after a rebellion of sorts, or just leaving in general, and taught them how to work through the shadows. Considering that we've already had a law right that stated that the Skaven of Clan Eshen actually learned how to master the law of stealth within Grand Cafe, rather than Nippon. I guess time will tell here, but I wanted to do a little bit of lore theory crafting, mostly because I don't feel like I do this nearly enough on this channel, especially when it comes to some newer lore, something that we can actually properly discuss like this. Obviously these are just my theories, but what do you guys think about this? What do you guys think happened to the last two unknown dragons? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, let's start a bit of a discussion, and uh, yeah, I'm really really curious. We don't get a lot of open lore in Warhammer Fantasy, at least not like for 40k and Age of Sigmar does, so having a little bit of a theory day every now and then could be fun. But with all that being said, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you all again very, very soon.